guys, Allie here. So, I'm actually finally sitting down and recording this. <laughs> I've wanted to do this for a while and I was having some camera difficulties, but we're just gonna ignore it and continue anyways. So pretty much what this video is about is Blue Apron. And in case you guys are not familiar with Blue Apron, which I'm sure everybody is, um, but pretty much what they do is that they send a box to your house and it has all this ingredients and recipes and stuff like that for you to make. And you can choose the two person plan or the four person plan. And I was not sure about the price at all, to be honest with you, because I don't like spending money. <laughs> I will spend money for good things and, you know, invest in something, but it's always really hard for me to drop, you know, $60 on one thing and it kind of freaks me out. But I really wanted to try this, so um, I gave it a shot because I like to think I can cook, but then this makes me feel like I can, can cook more. And now that I have the recipes, I can go back and make anything else I want or change some certain things or kind of, you know, work from what I learned and make my own stuff. So I'm going to share um, my experience and the recipes as well. So first I'm gonna start off um, pretty much what came in the box. Now I don't have the box anymore, but I'm getting a new order so when my second order of Blue Apron comes in, I'll record everything and you know actually show you what's in the box and stuff. So the recipes that I got um, were the Tinkerbell pepper quesadillas, the lemongrass chicken burger, and seared pork chops and plum salsa. I'm gonna talk about my experience with all of this and then kind of review it for you guys as well and see what I thought. Oh, it did come with a from the farm tomato and it talks about tomatoes, which are my favorite, so some info about some tomatoes. I will say though, the tomato that they gave me when they sent it to me was like pink, it wasn't red. So it wasn't completely ripe, and then once I waited for it to ripen, it was rotten. So I was not good at that. Okay, so first I'm gonna start off with the first one that I made, which was a lemongrass chicken burger. And I'll tell you guys that my boyfriend, which you guys might, I don't know if you guys knew I had a boyfriend, it's, I didn't have really talked about it yet, but he only really eats chicken. He doesn't eat red meat, so I made sure to get meals that were chicken based and not red meat based so that he would enjoy it as well. So lemongrass chicken burger comes with hoisin mayonnaise and roasted potato wedges. So this is what it looks like. You got your cilantro, your tomato, your burger, and then whatever sauce you want pretty much. So the ingredients with this um, came with uh, 10 ounces of ground chicken, two potato buns, two cloved garlics, one tomato, one stalk of lemongrass, uh, three-fourths a pound of Yuko golden potatoes, one bunch of cilantro, and then the little knick-knack packs that it comes with, three tablespoons of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of hoisin sauce, two teaspoons of sesame oil, two teaspoons of sriracha, one and one, oh, sorry, one one inch of pea garlic, and then one tablespoon, tablespoon of soy sauce. I guess I don't have to read you all the ingredients, but um, I can definitely leave off a link and stuff like that for all this stuff, or maybe take a picture and post it somewhere for you guys so you can look at it too. So this is the ingredients it comes with. It gives you a little description of the burger right here. It's pretty much a Thai-based burger, or I should say Thai-inspired, um, that has cilantro on it, which is cilantro kind of? I don't know, I think it does. And the lemongrass, which I think the only part that we really had a difficult time with <laughs> when me and Sam were cooking this was the lemongrass. <laughs> we thought we had to like peel it all the way down to the bottom and then cut it, which we only had to peel away like one layer and then cut it, so we didn't have enough lemongrass in it. Um, but the potatoes were really good and I liked the little um, aroma thing. Is that what you call it? <laughs> the aroma thing, you like put it in a pan and you cook it and then you mix it in with the ground chicken and then you make your little burgers and stuff. So this was really good. I really enjoyed this chicken burger, honestly. I would have, um, you know, put maybe more toppings on it because, um, I don't know, I guess I w it's hard because I think I wanted it closer towards like a burger and not just like a chicken burger, if that makes sense. So I wanted like, you know, some tomatoes and lettuce and ketchup and mayo, uh, but it was a lot lighter and it was a lot healthier and that sort of thing, and the potato wedges were good because it filled you up as well. Now Sam's review on this whole entire thing, he's a boy, he's a little bit pickier with eating. He did like it, but he's not a big fan of ginger, and there was a lot of ginger that was in there. Compared to the lemongrass, there was only a little bit of lemongrass, and then a lot of ginger, and he's not a huge fan of ginger. But it's really awesome now because I can make him chicken burgers whenever we want, and potato wedges too, we can make potato wedges. Um, also, I hate spicy food, so I didn't use the sriracha that came with it. I think that's actually still in my fridge. Okay, so the next one that I made um, 
I think was the Tinkerbell Pepper Quesadilla. And I think I would know how to make a quesadilla and stuff, but honestly, when me and my sister made quesadillas, we'd pretty much drown it in olive oil or put it in the microwave. So it wasn't, you know, as good as this quesadilla, I will say. Um, I really enjoyed this, honestly. I loved it. And Sam did not join me for this one. He uh, had a busy week that week. I can't remember what happened. But I was hungry and I just wanted to make this because I didn't want it to go bad, I guess. And it was been sitting in the refrigerator for a while. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make it today. I have nothing else to do, so I'm gonna make it. So pretty much the basics that come with this is the tortillas, tomatoes, peppers, cilantro, lime, uh, eggs, onions, cheese, and sour cream. Or, you know what? It's actually like a Mexican, oh, it's a Mexican crema, crema, cream, crema? Spanish for cream. I should know this, I really know. <laughs> so pretty much it had like the peppers and the onions and stuff inside and then it had like this like little tomato salsa on top and you could squeeze some lime on top of it as well and then you had your egg. I love eggs too. Like that's one of my favorite things. And I felt like this was more of a breakfast kind of meal just because it was with the egg, but it could also be like a brunch, like a Sunday brunch meal that you make as well. And here's the back of it where you like mix everything and cook it and put it all in and it was really good. I will say that the thing with Blue Apron is that it takes forever to cut everything. Like this says the uh, prep time was 15 minutes and cook time was 20 to 30. It takes me like 30 minutes to cut everything. Now I'm pretty sure if it was me and Sam both cutting stuff, it probably would take 15 minutes but I, maybe I'm just a slow cutter. I don't know, because it took me a long time to cut stuff. So I'm really excited for the quesadilla recipe that I can go back to and everything like that because this was so good and now I can go back, look at it, and add my own different vegetables and stuff to the inside and more cheese. It's really funny because I actually didn't think I liked Monterey Jack cheese, but it was so good on this quesadilla. Like, oh my God, it was so good. Highly recommend that. Okay, so then the last recipe that me and Sam made, he actually joined me for this one, was the seared pork and plum salsa with Corn kale and farro salad. Now, when I picked this up, I don't know what the hell farro was. And that's like the first thing that you cook because it takes a while for it to cook. And I was like, what the heck is farro? To be honest, I still don't know what farro is. I think it's a wheat, kind of like rice. I don't really know. What I really loved about this is that the pork was very easy to make on top of the kale salad, which is what I call it. They said farro salad, but I feel like my salad had more kale than farro in it. I thought it was really good because I didn't think I liked kale, but I think the kale with the farro and the almonds and the, some of the plums from the top of the pork actually fell into the salad. So it was like some plums in there too, which were, it was so ripe and it was so good by the time I made it. And also the corn, which was kind of hard to like, you know, cut off the top and everything like that, but it was so good like all together. And I did add um, some seasoning to it because it tells you to, you know, season for taste if you'd like. So I took some seasoning, um, like Italian garlic and herb seasoning and stuff like that to put in and it was really good. And it was really funny because <laughs> I didn't think Sam would eat it. And so um, my sister and her boyfriend actually ordered pizza and I said, if Sam comes over and he wants pizza, do not offer him pizza till he eats his dinner that I'm making him right now. So when I actually made everything, because I made everything myself and he was um, coming home late from band practice, I had everything on the plates and we sat down and we ate. He came perfect timing and um, he got me, I think, some juice or a glass of wine and we sat down and ate it. And he was eating it and I asked if he liked it and he liked the pork a lot. And then it was really funny because once he finished the pork, he had a lot of kale salad left. And I was like, I know the kale salad's a little, like, not your taste, but not what you eat every day. He's like, yeah, it's it's good. And then he only had kale salad left and no more pork. And I said, you don't have to eat it all. He's like, it's a lot easier to eat it when you have the pork with the kale salad stuff. But it was just the kale salad's a little hard to get down. And I was like, no, I totally understand. There's a piece of pizza that's a... Uh, on the counter you can go grab some. So he really enjoyed the pork and the kale salad. It was just a lot of kale salad and we honestly just took our leftovers um, from both our plates and put it in a tub where I took it to work to the next day. And it tasted really good at work the next day. So I was definitely really happy with the kale salad and I've cooked pork before but it's been a while. So I was happy that I got to make pork again and get familiar with it. So now I feel like I can cook it again. So those are the three recipes that I got um, with Blue Apron. Um, I don't know if you guys want any information or if you have any questions about the recipes to so put it down below. I could definitely do that for you. And I can also post pictures as well on um, some kind of 
probably my blog or something like that, which I haven't posted on in a while. But just for y'all's information, just to have the recipe and stuff like that, because with Blue Apron, you're mainly paying for all the ingredients that comes with it, and then the recipe is probably like a small sliver price for it. So I feel like I'm not ripping Blue Apron off, honestly. So my closing thoughts of Blue Apron is pretty much I love cooking with it. I really do. I think that me and Sam being home and cooking and making all this good food that's really healthy for us together is so much fun. I absolutely love it. Now the only two things I don't like about it is the price and how long it takes to cut everything. Now the price, I can see where everything's coming from. It's organic. Maybe it's not organic. Not sure if it's organic or not. I think it's just probably local farm grown food. But that's what you're paying for, I feel like. You're paying for it to have it delivered to your door as well. Like it comes to your door. You don't have to go out and go grocery shopping and find all these items and such. So I got that part of the price for it. And if you really think about it, um, I paid $60 with this past meal. I'm getting three meals and it feeds two people. So when you think about it, I'm paying $10 a person, which is actually less money than you would pay at a restaurant. Of course, someone's, you know, making the food for you at a restaurant, but you know what I mean. Now the whole like cutting it, cutting all like the vegetables and stuff and that taking time, I totally understand it. I mean, it helps if I have someone, that, you know, help me cut the vegetables and it's a little quicker and stuff like that. I mean, if you ever make this stuff again, like you can get pre-cut stuff. You don't have to get the stuff that you have to cut yourself. Like the corn, like the corn that I made with the kale salad, that took a, lo a long time to like, you know, cut off the cob. You can just get corn that's already cut. You don't have to get the cob. It's just fresher when it's off the cob. Cob's a funny word. Anyone else think that? Um, so yeah, that's my review of my first Blue Apron. Um, I obviously loved it, so I ordered a second one. <laughs> so I'm really excited um, for my next few recipes. My delivery that's coming on September 4th is a chicken and fresh basil, basil, oh lord, fettuccine, <laughs> a seared salmon and sauce grabiche. I don't know how you pronounce that. And a summer vegetable and queso tostadas. Now I know that Sam's probably not gonna eat the salmon. So maybe I'll make like a chicken, like a chicken breast or something for him that night. But I think that I'm really excited for the salmon as well because I love salmon and since Sam's not gonna eat it, that means I get two so I can take one to work the next day. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll let you guys know how all that stuff goes. I'll probably like do some vlogging or something. Um, if Sam doesn't get too embarrassed with uh, cooking and we'll see how it goes. I think that's everything for today's video. Um, sadly, Blue Apron does not have a referral code yet. I don't know why. And that's something that a lot of people have complained about that Blue Apron doesn't have a referral code. I like it. I mean, I love Blue Apron. I think it's wonderful. I know there's a whole bunch of other programs out there that probably do have referral codes, but I'll put the link for Blue Apron and maybe if I can find some links for the recipes, I'll put it down below too and maybe you guys can look at it that way. And if you guys have any more questions, or anything like that uh, just leave it down below if you have thanks so much for watching my video and I'll talk to you guys in a later video bye guys